time to do a bit of first person as we follow someone in their electric car. A Mary Smithson going from as a cleaner at the medical centre, go to their home to the Woodlands residence on the other side. <coughs> Excuse me, of this road. So we'll follow this person as they decide to drive home and see what it's like again down in first person mode. One of my favourite modes I say I spent about 80% of my time in the FPS and 20% doing what I should be doing, building cities. But let's get this show on the road, shall we, as this pe person heads home. Oh, just a note, you'll see uneducated a lot. It does take time for the education system to kick through, which is probably why the self-sufficient stuff didn't work. I haven't got enough educated sims yet. But let's get this show on the road. Taxis, taxis, taxis. I use the UK roads a lot, narrower. Still take the same amount of traffic as the vanilla mode, but they just look better. Right. Let's do this. Wonderful thing about dropping to first person mode is you get to see not only your beautiful city which you've just spent hours creating and maybe losing a few times in a, in a game crash but also you could also pick up on problems quickly especially with traffic or a, um, pedestrian problems. So here we come to one of the big roundabouts as we come to Brownville. It's default speed limits in is usually 30, 40, 50, 60, 80, or 90, depending on the roads. Oh, everyone loves that cycleway. They really do. It's oh, traffic lights. I can actually see the home here. It's that big tower that's coming up. Oh, more pedestrians. Lots of walking. This is what I like to see. Yep, there we go again. And we're home. Hey, always great to be home. Let's see if I can go and find. Actually, let's just take a quick, quick look. See. Oh yeah, I think we're gonna. Nighttime views give some of the best views. So let's ping a bus. Actually, I might bring the feeder on in the next day, so because this is not working fully effective yet, it requires the busway to come online. So we'll probably do that next round. But let's follow the bus back around again, because as I said, night views give some of the best views. So we'll connect back to the busway tomorrow. I've also just laid down a railway station, ready for that to be connected up. Again, transit oriented developments, infrastructure ahead of all urban development, the Japanese model. Not the New Zealand model of put all your housing down first and wonder where your infrastructure was 30 years later. Little saying goes, Transport begets land use, a land use begets transport, and this is a, this is the same in city skylines, even with its limitations on multi-use zoning. Transport definitely begets the land use, and land use definitely begets the transport, okay. What's going to build, and what transport systems are going to be used straight off the bat, especially as a new resident or business moves in. Again, why I like putting the infrastructure, especially transit services, ahead is that the game does pick up on it straight away when a resident moves in as it picks up the travel path from work to home and home to work and so if the transit line is already available there's about an 85% chance providing the transit service doesn't get held up at a congestion point uh, which is what you've got to watch 85% of the time they will use transit to get from their destination uh, for the for the rest of it, when I say transit, it could also, if you've got what we're seeing to the right here, cycling and walking as well, especially if the encourage bike mode's on. The other 50% will be drop back to car, so build ahead, they will use it. Yes, they will still use cars for other things, but if the transit system's there first, they will have a tenacity to use it first over the car, and you can keep your traffic rate above 75% percent which is where you want it to be if not higher so just 
just go down the busway. And lots of pedestrians. It's a Sunday evening, so everyone's out and about. They've all been to church or the synagogue or the, the mosque, and now they're out and about. Again, I run 24-hour cities, hence the transport system is going 24 hours. It's quite ironic in some of my largest cities like Monaco, you would think the busiest time is your peaks. But it is. It's actually some of my busiest times can be anywhere between 10 p.m. and 4 a.m. in the morning on any day of the week, especially once tourism and leisure gets going and the night kind of time economy is in full swing. I think one of my other next projects is to separate the pedestrians off this. Not only does it hold up traffic, it is extremely unsafe for them to cross the road with this amount of traffic bollocking around. And it's only going to get more as the area develops and we get more buses down, firing down the busway. But yeah, no, some of my busiest, especially with light rail or metro rail and the buses, their busiest times are actually between 10pm and 4am uh, in the morning. It's just full of people in the nighttime, nighttime economy. It's something I wish Auckland would have, but Auckland doesn't have. Because Auckland Transport is still set in the 9 to 5, 7 to 9, 4 to 6, Monday to Friday mantra. They don't believe a nighttime economy exists. Hence, yeah, but as you can see here, even with a fledging nighttime economy, it's just all action stations. And away we go back down the busway. Once she gets back down the busway, uh, go back into urban development mode and we'll start getting ready for the next set of fixes and patches. Because, like any city, it's always on the move, always growing. And it always needs something done. No matter how far you like to try and think ahead. One thing you'll notice I will try and do a lot is green cities. You will see street trees everywhere. Where If I've got the weather enabled, which I don't use because of the memory requirements it takes. Uh, flooding does occur, but if you have trees down, well, guess what it does? It minimizes the flooding, doesn't it? So it also minimizes noise and pollution, uh, air pollution. So cities like these, especially with your high density zones, trees are your friend. Yep, we're away again. I said I love first person mode. It's just dropping down to their level is always wonderful to see. I think that bus just ran a red light. Oops. Actually, given the city is small enough, I might actually re-enable the weather because it does affect traffic, transit, construction, and just how the city runs. So I might actually re-enable it once I've finished here. Alrighty, that's all for this part.